Field crash. I mean, they nerfed it so it's it the damage reduction doesn't last nearly. I think they literally have the time or something like that back whenever they nerfed that. So the damage reduction coming from that is great, but it only lasts for like a short. It's only five seconds now. I think it used to be almost ten seconds. Am I wrong? It's like eight it was, seconds or something. I think it was five plus two per level. Five plus, so it would gain two seconds on each level. Yeah, I think it was up to eleven at max level or something like that. It was a crazy, yeah. I mean, now um, it's a higher damage reduction, but not that much. Like, it was not... Overall, it was a severe nerf. Yeah. Remember that, of course, as a um, Pango aficionado myself. The thing to keep in mind about this lane for Pango is... Will this work? You, it's very hard to CS with Swashbuckle and then CS for the rest of the wave. Because mm -hmm. Swashbuckle is your safety net against Shadowfiend. If you use that to last hit a creep and then you walk into swing at another creep, as if can triple raise you, you can't get away. So that's why this lane is so hard, is that your primary range creep killing tool is actually kind of dangerous to use if you want to make sure to get the rest of the wave. And in order to set up the wave to get multiple CS with Swashbuckle, you have to go and hit creeps. And then we're back to square one, where you're in raise range. So I'm expecting XWY to destroy this lane, just flat out, uh, win it handily against the Pango. And that's a position that Brile hasn't really been in in the games that I've seen of TSM so far this tournament. I don't think Brile has been truly run over in the lane, but this one could be it. This is a... Uh, well, how is their, hard one. their ganking potential? I mean, you have a Jakiro and Hoodwink. Yeah. That on the other side, you have... answers the question, doesn't yeah, it? Exactly. And then the glimpse will be extremely good against a Pango before he gets level 6. Already look how XWI is playing here. Yeah. And this is definitely the lane to watch. I would expect First Blood potentially to be here. But we'll see. Maybe Brow can do some, some crazy shenanigans to get back. And, I mean, this was kind of salvageable when the small camp used to exist, but... Yeah. Pango feels like you just can't even be in this lane at a certain point. He'll be able to secure a lot of these range creeps, but once uh, XWY hits level 3, I think we might see a kill if Brile's not careful. And if he is careful, then uh, he's just... <laughs> he's not going to get any CS. He'll yeah. die, but he well, won't that's get that's any Damn it if you do, so. damn it if you don't kind of lane. You did okay on these first couple waves, to be honest. 4-1 uh, and one against 6-1 and one is... It's not a bad start, but as you pointed out, level 3 is, is the place to be for the Shadow Fiend here. And the top lane, uh, Boboka has just pulled the wave away from the AM Jakiro. Uh, Timbersaw doesn't want to play this lane to start because he doesn't offer enough on level 1, and they're just going to chase him down and burn all his mana with Dual Breath and the Orb of Venom Anti-Mage. So I like that a lot from Boboka that he just pulls it straight away. And bot, this lane should be very, very good for Monet. Uh, as well as Pichu, because I don't think Brood Hoodwing can really fight the Monkey King here very well, especially not with a Disruptor backing up with these high damage spells. So, Astro honestly might be. I was to... wrong. First blood pop. Yeah, it's a trade off, but Tomato gets the big one. What you came for. Definitely a little surprising, especially considering Ricky has one of the highest base regen in the game. Yeah, Brile still existing is definitely a good news for TSM. There is the potential for TSM behind. to lose all three lanes, though, which is very concerning here. Tomato getting that first blood is big, since that that definitely will stabilize the top lane. Uh, I think it's the one that, on paper, they have the best chance in and are actually favored, but not by like such a large margin that it can't go wrong in the blink of an eye with... If you misstep a little bit against Timber Ricky, they have chase potential and they have a lot of damage. Um, but for now, that lane is definitely going well. The other two, however, not not so hot. But that's also what we expected. So. Yep, Monet sitting on 14 and 5. Kasane on the off lane, Brood 7 and 1. But I mean, the Brood Hoodwink, I feel like that doesn't really offer that much uh, in general, regardless of what the matchup is. I'm not really seeing the direct synergy here. But they obviously picked the Hoodwink for other reasons, past the laning stage. XWY. It's all going to be about rune control here, as he is continuing to <laughs> force Brile almost out of XP range there for a moment. He's going to get the shield crash off. Has to be careful now. That's the second ra third raise, actually. He's attempting to get away. He has the long range raise. One more right click will do he's it. So and he's done. 
So happened a little bit later than we were expecting, perhaps, but XWY does get the kill and is now dominating this lane. And now it's going to get even worse because now Shadowfiend's level 5. So now the raises go up by about 50% damage. Death's bounty. And he might up. even... Yeah, so he's also getting a water, so he is actually back to basically full resources here with Bryle coming back in. I missed the first raise, though. And yeah, that Bryle is <laughs> designed to using his swash bucket just to get the, the range creeps. That's kind of what the lane looks like a yeah, trade. Here. Kasana, Kasana does kill gets the off kill. first. He does. Monet, he's going to be happy with the solo XP. Kasana able to wait out the Jingu stacks. We're seeing another, another bottle water. refill mid. Yeah, another Man, bottle they are refill. just babysitting XWY so hard. I feel like uh, Bryle's the one that needs this attention. Is both yeah. getting chased by White Mine in the jungle, but tricks of the trade to the low ground. Oh, takes another liquid fire. Way out. And now Bryle has resigned to buying raindrops to be able to sustain, but that's just more economical damage. Yep, that's fair. And, and he, he's kinda... gonna just keep being bullied every time. So these raindrops, they're gonna keep him safe for a bit, but the question is, are they actually gonna even be worth the gold they cost? 225 gold, is he gonna get CS because of these, or are they just gonna get burnt? In which case, all he got for them was experience of being able to stand a little bit longer in the lane. He's already lost half of them. Not, not great. Six minute rune is going to be coming up here. Of course, XWY is the one with control of the lane. He can push this a lot faster than the Pango can at this stage, considering the level advantage that he has right now. And he's also getting some assistance via Boboka, who's chasing off Ari now into GSM's Ari is triangle. not safe here at all. Gets off the bushwhack. Ends up getting glimpsed, and now Boboka blocking. You can see Whitemon on the other side of the cliff here. Oh, Ari is under. <laughs> what? You okay I, there? I can't believe that happened. The centaur chased him all the way out of the camp and just hit him in the head once in the tree line. Oh, I actually missed that. <laughs> yeah, he got killed by a neutral there. That's, That's very unfortunate goodness. for Aster. I don't know if Ari was trying to set that up. That looked a little bit like pure chance, but you know, you'll take it either way. If you TSM. You can take anything anything you can get right now with this SF becoming monstrous here. Now yeah, the, the pressure's on the tier well, one so power. Bryle is not even... Bryle is only safe in his ulti now. Even Swashbuckling isn't going to get him far enough away. Mid from Hoodwink, he'll bottle refill for Bryle. Oh yeah, that's what he needs. Good stuff. Uh, worth pointing out that obviously with this, all this rotation, Kasane now is in huge trouble bottom. Yeah, they're gonna glimpse him back into the Wukong's command. Do they have the control though? He's getting some good regen out of the spider webs, but he's not hiding in the trees anymore. Tricks of the trade not doing barely any damage here. And Kasane actually lives. Yeah. Aster misplayed that a little bit with their spells. They used the Boundless Strike first as they were glimpsing, so they missed some stun time. I think if, top if Monet hadn't second-guessed himself, he would have got that kill with the Wukong's command by casting that first. They're not doing any damage to XXS now that his mana is burned. <laughs> I actually don't even think they can kill him. Yeah, he He's regening faster. Oh my goodness. That is absurd. Yeah, well, he's going to just be able to stand here and farm with this Vanguard build. Oh, yeah. So. And they lose the safe lane, or the off lane tower, minute 7 due TSM. That is really rough. This catapult wave plus the rotation of the supports was enough. Brood can't really fend for herself at all against this kind of push. Hopefully for TSM rune they get a rune here. Top. Unfortunately, it's an illu rune. <laughs> Yeah, the most useless of all is Ari. Takes a couple raises, but able to walk it away thanks to the bushwhack. Ryle has been supplied some stacks in the jungle, much needed, of course. Still working on his arcane boots. And we can see in terms of farm, he is about 1,500 net worth behind XWY, who is going for the Dragonlance first. And what, what's the build on SF these days? Uh, I mean, this is a mid-SF, so... <clears throat> I think 
There's two general builds. One is the Dragonlance right click build, and the other one is more of a spell casting focused build. And it looks like this game is going to be the just the Dragonlance build up that he's going for. I think it's the right approach. You're playing against Anti Mage Carry. I think it's really good if you have two physical damage cores. So playing both him and Monet with that would be wise, I think. And I, I'm assuming one of them will go Deso. Probably Monet will, after a battle fury, at least at some point, get it. Kasane's in oh, trouble. Another attempt at Kasane. Yeah, he was stuck inside the kinetic field this time, and then they glimpsed, so that'll be enough. This time they set it up well, and they had kinetic field for the first time, as you said. Didn't have it on table. And look at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at XXS. He's just... He doesn't care. Like he's literally just standing here tanking the AM and the tower. He's gonna get monovoided for a pitiful 200 damage. And with this soul ring, Tamato is actually in trouble in this lane because XXS can just soul ring do, use his spells instantly. Yeah. And yeah, he's he's a thousand net worth behind the AM, but now he's winning the lane. Like AM can't contest him. He's pinging. He's like, can you guys help? I I'm losing my tower to a zero mana hero. Um, <laughs> This is the, pretty the funny to watch. The AM is not he having can't mana. can't do anything. <laughs> Ten minute rune is coming up. It's top again. Brile able to get it this time, and it's a haste, so that's going to be a lot more effective. Let's take some heavy damage for his efforts, though. Yeah, XXS continuing to pressure this tower. Uses yeah. a soul. Oh, he also has his arcane mana. ring, so he actually has two ways of gaining mana. He's, yeah, he's just going to force him away. And this tower's gonna go go bye-bye go here pretty soon. This is the makings of a stomp chain, and they're actually just getting absolutely destroyed all over the map right now. TSM, and the worrying thing about it is that their real playmaking hero is probably the Pango, but his game is not good, to say the least, so... I feel like you're kind of forced to start making some moves as a team now, and you need to find some successes, but... All they're going to find here will be Peachy's level 5 Disruptor. It's not great for a haste in rotation with your Pango. And, in the meantime, your mid tower is getting pushed away at heavily by SF plus a Catapult. Yep. Now, they're going to TP a couple members of TSM. Yep. And they might try a backstab maneuver here with Brile coming in from behind with the Rolling Thunder. If they can get XWY, this would be very big. The so focus here, smoke screen smoke. on the screen. Ports nearby. XWY looks to be just A-OK. -okay. Now Monet has made his transition over as well as Whitemon taking damage from XXS as the entirety of Aster basically are here. They get the tower, they get the Jakiro, and they lose no but they barely lost any HP during this engagement. Yeah. I mean that was just a clutch smoke screen from Baboka. That was basically perfect. He smoked off the Hoodwing after Acorn shot, but before Bushwhack, so Ari couldn't combo. And the smoke screen also blocked off Jakiro's entrance path to get the ice path off. So none of their combo ended up landing on that pango roll. And then the fight's just over. Like they have nothing left in the tank and they have to give up. Radiance and now that Monet showing in the top lane, Kamado has to just sit in the trees as he's pretty close to finishing the Battle Fury, but. It's just such a careful. long road ahead of him, right? Like, who's going to make space for him aside from the Brood? Yeah, I mean, once he gets that, he still needs a couple items before he can really be useful in these fights. He has to be careful. Monet might be trying to set something up here. Although he is all alone. His mid lane is where most of the heroes are at the moment. Brile getting glimpsed back into the smoke screen. And the silence coming out from Siamese Cat means the end of Brile. It's only a 6-3 to three game, but the, the lead in terms of net worth heavily in favor of Aster already. They're ahead on every position. Mid is ahead by, what's that, almost 3k? Carry is ahead by 200, offlane's ahead by 5 or 700, and the supports are ahead by 500 each. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's fair enough to say they've won all three lanes, despite AM having higher net worth than Timber, just overall the way the lanes have gone for Aster is very, very solid. Um, and the scary part is, yet to come, because what does the Dire lineup do when BKB comes out on the Shadow Fiend? They actually can't stop him at all. So yes, nine seconds of being a complete god in the fight. Uh, Aster will probably be looking for a potential Roche then as well. Timber can just tank it while SF gets it done with raises and attacks. They have Monkey King who can help out as well. With an Aegis, they might just be able to take every outer tower. 
Yeah. I wouldn't mind a, an early basher Ags for Brile. I know that's still a long ways away, but I don't know if yeah. the refusal is really going to do that much when you're getting it this late. I still think it's a must-have, right? They, it is cheap, valuable damage, and it is teamfight disruption that can de very well be helpful. Like, if he hits the swashbuckle on the Ricky, for example, most of his mana is gone. Um, burning mana from Shadowfiend is also valuable. But yeah, I like that TSM are trying to look for moves quite a lot, but they're just getting outplayed. Like, the moves are not successful. They're maybe too telegraphed here. But if they, if they just keep the status quo, it's not a winning strategy. They have to look for something. Yeah, well... They're going to be the recipient of a potential smoke gank here from Aster, as they might run into Tomato. I'm not sure. Do they have enough lockdown? Oh, I mean, with Ricky nice here, game. there's the glimpse into the static storm, and Tomato is just dead. Easy, easy kill. Now, he did have his Battle Fury, so not a whole lot of gold loss at the very least. That's a silver lining for TSM. The TSM went for their own smoke 30 seconds ago, and now it breaks. Oh, and now they might just be oh, no, by Monet. Glimpse and dead. Right, this is. What you see is what gets you. Yeah, that is uh, zero and three Pango. There's not much good news in the TSM camp here. You gotta say. Yeah. I thought that maybe they would try to. I know they didn't have the greatest lineup for it, but the matchup mid was so bad. Like you could see it, the writing on the wall. We talked about it. Before the game even started, I thought that they would attack. maybe try to switch up the lanes, do something weird, or perhaps, you know, <laughs> they bring just, in the Jakiro. When they the picked the Pango, there was no hero that could win mid. Or even do well. Anti-Mage gets stomped. I would say Brood mid should also have a really hard time, and then you're playing Brood mid. Um, so th they just didn't have any options except pick another hero than Pango. That's why I thought that pick was peculiar, because... You had the information there, like maybe they were just banking on the fact that XWY wouldn't play the Shadow Fiend and it would go on Monet, right. but you picked a seriously losing matchup, and Brile knows this is a losing matchup. So, I feel like there must have been something else in his repertoire here that would have worked. But Astra taking advantage of perhaps some hero pool issues here for TSM? Um, yeah, potentially. I feel like uh, I'd have to look at the sheet again, but I feel like Brile picked more than... I think there were some heroes that he's picked in the past. That were still available at that point, but I could be wrong. Uh, I, I feel so too. I feel like Brawl plays quite a lot of different stuff, so... And this has definitely got to be one of the absolute worst ones for him. That he could have run in, uh, in the mid lane against SF. Yeah, I, think it, I think you're right though. I, I think they just were not expecting it to actually go mid. But they are facing the consequences now. The mid tower is going to get denied. And nice work there from... Uh, Kasane to at least open up a little bit there. They will more than likely lose their top tier too, as XWI has shown up with his BKB. Yep, that is looking pretty nice. Monet has the Battle Fury Orb of Venom, or Orb of Corrosion, I should say, and about a thousand into his BKB. So they'll probably get this tier two outpost, and then that's when Roche becomes available with any kind of a pick. And I mean, with this lead, they could potentially just do it without even needing that. I think they could Roche and take a lane of Rax, actually. I think the game is in that state right now. The Timbersaw is going to finish Kaya Sanj Vanguardman at 17. He's going to be borderline invincible. We've already covered how invincible the Shadowfin's going to be doing DK. Static Storm onto Brile. Baboka doing as much damage as he can. He gets glimpsed back again. And dead again. XWY is pretty low, though. Has to pop his BKB, BKB, so that's something. I mean, when you're happy with a trade of a BKB for your mid... That is when things are not going well for you. I don't think they're happy. But it's something. It's it's a it, it's the best way to put it. It's better than nothing. Yeah, that is has been <laughs> happening. Better than negative. It's their best outcome in the last 10 minutes. And that is accurate. Bounty. Now approaching a 10,000 gold lead for Team Master. XXS yeah, says is... nope, my jungle. NK at 18 minutes. Mm. Yeah. Shellac it like a ding dong for sure. Really? Why is Monster TSM going to go boots. for another smoke mm. move here, but Monet is already hidden in the trees and Boboka will break the smoke. He will dart. Yeah, there's the dart. 
smoke screen, boundless strike. Goodbye, Hoodwink. Ryle was thinking about rolling thundering in, but goes against it. Still thinking about it. Gonna back away, and Aster just will continue having all this map control, continuing to gain on their lead. XWY pinging Roche. While this is time. happening, Tomato trying to work towards his Manta style. 1500 into the ultimate orb. Yeah, the Roche. Oh, GSM looks like they want to potentially contest. I mean, I think they kind of have to here. It's XX going to try to turn this around onto White Money. He's just going to get right click down into Oblivion. Actually staying alive. The mech keeps him alive even further. As Brow doing a nice job with the Rolling Thunder. As Akiro does eventually die. It takes a while, but you can see TSM just outside of that haven't done any damage, really. Nay, sitting at half HP. XWY just wants to resume his previous activity, which was Roche. Now, keep in mind, Tomato still farming. At least he's getting something out of this. Oh, uh, they Although, find Ari as well with the dart. Yeah, another support death. And I think that's where TSM will concede the Roche. And almost certainly, I would think goes on first. Yeah, that He's going to finish his pipe in now. I think high ground is definitely in the cards here. You need to push out bottom, and then you could just go straight down mid. I think that seems plausible. If they want, they can obviously wait. I don't feel like they're under any time pressure here, so it's a matter of whether they feel like the game is just theirs to claim now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think the game will get much harder in the next 10 minutes if they just farm. So we'll look for a pick mid. Well, BKB. Very early BKB from XWY. Not sure if he missed click there, the but he's going to use run. it full effect to kill Kasane. Oh my god. He's going to take the bunch of the damage from TSM, though. Sharpshooter's coming in. It is going to hit onto the SF, so it's a 1 for 2 so far in favor of Aster as the double damage is still applied to XWY. Uses his four Tomato staff, Hurricane Pike, Tomato, glimpsed back, and Boundless struck into the ground. Three for one for Aster, and they remain with their Aegis. Yep. Lose their four to kill a three, one, and a five. I ran the math on it, it was worth it. Hmm. And this goes, here we go. So they've pushed bottom far enough out that I think they can commit to this mid push if they want. Uh, Monet is going to finish his BKB in the meantime, bottom as well, so they don't need him here in mid to push this tower as it stands. Looks like... Alright, TSM is just going to go for it. The carry is here. coming in, SF with no BKB, but again, has that Aegis. White Mon in the meantime, trying to pressure XXS, who's attempting to run away now from the Brood. SF looks to be quite low, so they're going to be able to burn the Aegis, as Tomato has now finally respawned. Still does not have the BKB for another 12 seconds. Can XXS and company keep their SF safe? He's going to get stuck inside the ice path. It's hit by the spider link. But it looks like enough space has been made for him to get away. Oh, nice, nice Manta, Manta. for Tomato. Clutch. Dodging out on a glimpse, so... If he mistimes that, he's dead. Stop. That had to land. They've got pretty close to killing XWY. Just, uh... Yep. Able to finish the job. Dyer's bottom tower. So, in the end, not the best use of the Aegis, I suppose. Uh, Aster were playing the map a little bit greedily there. They had Monet bottom. If Monet was mid at, with the SF push there, the the go doesn't even happen. But the reason TSM feel confident that they can actually take the fight is that the Monkey King was showing bottom lane. Uh, but now that they're together, they'll still go high ground. Presence affects aura, t uh, presence aura affects buildings, talents are unlocked. In the meantime, they're also killing the Brood mid. Yes, they are. He's stuck inside the kinetic field. He pops his greaves, but only going to delay the inevitable. So that's 45 seconds with no buyback on the off lane. Rolling Thunder not going to be fully used. Looks like TSM definitely didn't expect that, considering t Timber and SF were hitting the bot tower. They thought the rest of the team were with them, but it was smoke and mirrors. Literally, smoke screen and mirrors. Yep. Oh, that's All one right. set of racks. And they're going to be able to get the you Rolling the Thunder up. in. BKB from both the Monkey King and SF. Ryle, he's just going to get killed inside his ult. Oh dear, glimpse back on a White Mon now. Another death for TSM as the kill score is 19 to 4. 
Asteroid. Don't worry, Anti-Mage is still in the game. He... Yeah, he is. He My has basher. not finished farming yet. A ways to go. I mean, is this even the type of game that... Uh... Hey, what, what is the scenario that TSM could possibly come back? I know that the percentage is probably 99 to 1 right now. Although Tomato... Oh boy, he might get caught out here. Oh, he's going to get glimpsed. Static Storm is there, but he's able to get outside the kinetic field. Jumps back in, gets a nice mana void to pick out the Disruptor. But now, damage. he's got to be careful. The Greaves are there. He's going to focus all his efforts on the XXS. He's already used his mana void, and my god, the right clicks from XWY. More than enough to bring Kamado to his knees. They're going to get the Hoodwink. They actually use a Wukong's command. Okay, well, he's dead. Yep, very dead. I think, to answer your question about what the comeback is, I think it's a fat mono void. I think that's like the only way you win this game now as Dire, is you need to get Timber Saw's mana burned, and then you need to do a huge AoE bomb with that that can kill the other cores, because I don't think you have enough in the tank to really deal with Monkey King and SF as the AM. You're just not there in terms of items. So your ulti is your best tool. That's how you kill. Um, and you did get a good mono void there in the Disruptor that spilled over on the Timber, but... I mean, that just doesn't cut it, right? It's not enough when the cavalry shows up. He has to go back, and he actually ends up dying Dyer's anyway. Ryle? Oh, XWY might have actually been able to find a kill there if he hadn't... I think, should be fine. I think he didn't mean to hit him there. I think he misclicked. Because if he walks into him and requims, he could have maybe got him there. And Ryle's going to have to limp away. They just sit in the trees looking for another pickoff, potentially. Tomato's in the air. He's going to need a backup. Boundless Strike connects. But they're going to try to turn this around on Monet Good instead. Stuns. This was a trick from PSM. Monet pops the BKB. He's going to be just fine. Now XWY has come to play. Shakiro goes bye-bye. Good attempt there from PSM. But again, just not enough. Uh, we won't know about Roche in the next for another two minutes. So expect Aster to just continue to farm and expand on this lead. Yeah, once again, they're not under any pressure to, to finish this game if they don't want to take the risk. You can just keep playing the map for another couple of minutes. With the next ages, I expect the game to full-on end. Uh, I don't think Aster will try to brute force it unless they find a pick outside the base on a key core or something like this, but it's... it's fine. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much to them as long as their cores keep progressing. Timbersaw's working on BKB. Once he has that, he can also kill the AM. Because Tomato's not buying BKB. So actually, Timber can almost solo him. That's yeah. a dead hoodwink. I'm actually a little surprised that TSM... Or that Bryal took the double damage. Bottle. Didn't try to give it to AM. Not that he's the best double damage carrier, but Pango certainly isn't. Yeah. Oh, Kasane, you did. XWY, 10 and 0 at the moment. Just having himself a completely free game. Yep. As and prophesized. We, yeah, as we, we finally got one right, Cinderin. Yep, we always right. He's going to get Paladin Sword now for his troubles. Very nice. Surprised to see Monet still sitting on the Tier 1 Possessed Mask. But I guess they had the, stats. the Shadow Fiend had the Brigand's Blade until now, but now Monet should definitely swap over to either the Paladin Sword, the Enchanted Quiver, or the Brigand's Blade. I think the ideal assignment here is probably Paladin Sword and the Monkey, and SF takes the Enchanted Quiver. I guess unless Brigand's Blade is just that good on the Monkey that he still thinks it's a higher value item, but he's not even taking it, so I guess he's not paying attention to that right now. Yeah, he he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Giga Chad. GSM, they're smoked up. <laughs> when you're up by this much, I think you could have no neutral item and That's not true. even realize the difference. Right, they're using that smoke just to get some vision in this jungle for Tomato to farm. But I think they saw this. Yeah, there's a ward here showing some of their movement. So I think Aster have a good idea that they did just that. Ari's dead. It's just a matter of is when. He now? Yep. That is uh, the sleep dart. And you can see he's all alone. Poor little hoodwink. 
Definitely a good combo that we've seen time and time again with the, the Ricky and the Disruptor is that Jakiro is going to be next. And you think you are finally out of the smoke screen and you just get glimpsed right back. Yep. Rough stuff. All right. Okay, he wants to fight with Abyssal, Abyssal Blade, Blade into the Wukongs. Boundless Strike not available for three seconds, so... Monet with some very interesting Wukong's commands this game. He was probably hoping the glimpse was going to reach in time, but... Peter a little bit too far away. Doesn't have Dagger just yet. And Roche is up and ready with the Aegis and Shard, so... Expecting that to potentially be the game ender. TSM, I... Gonna have to try to contest this, and the game might end on this fight. Yeah, potentially as they well. have to. It's really, it really is that simple. They can't defend against this, so, so they will. They're trying to move out and cover some ground here with Acorn Shot and a Sentry. Now, this will obviously give away to Aster what's happening. Aster, you hear the Rolling Thunder coming from Brile, and the newly picked up Blink Dagger. Pretty good stun onto two heroes. Ember saw as well as all the damage is being applied to XWY, but stops the BKB and destroys Jakira. Tomato able to blink away. The glimpse now onto Kasane as the Requiem is crocked. Down goes the spider. So with the hoodwink just falling there, that's a three for Nada as GG's called TSM. It's over. Dumpster game number one. Yeah. And I mean, uh, when you see this game play out, it's pretty clear what TSM needs to adjust for the next game, right? But. They have to give themselves better lanes and better conditions to play the game in general. Uh, Aster just took advantage of a, a clear, a clear weakness of the TSM strategy.